Hello everyone, this is Megan Adine with the Silhouette Cameo Fun Project Inspirations um, admin team. And today I'm going to go ahead and do a quick tutorial that was requested of me um, regarding the basic knockout method. Um, the, ba the knockout method is really fun. Um, you can get really creative. I know a lot of people do it with their sports teams and schools and um, depending on how detailed you want to get, um, you know, your imagination, um, your inspiration can really take you anywhere. You could do whatever you want. And so I'm going to go ahead and do the simple one here. Um, I'm going to keep a Halloween. Um, it'll be, I have a witch's brew and I have a fun little cauldron in the middle. Um, and let me go ahead and show you how simple that actually is. So. What we're going to go ahead and start with is a clean design space right here. Um, I don't work with grid lines. You can if you'd like, or I usually put them on towards the end when I'm sizing. Um, but I'll go ahead and put those on for you there. Um, I went online and I found a very simple black cauldron. Um, it doesn't have to be black. I made it black. but and a clip art, whatever you'd like to use. It could be a mascot, um, any other pictures you want, or it could even be other words. I like to keep it pretty bold um, and full of color, not too much details. The more details you get, it's going to be kind of hard to read um, the writing behind it. It gets a little confusing for your eyes, and you'll see why. So I got this cauldron. It's not the best, whatever, um, and I went in and traced it. And so let me go ahead and start with the words here. Um, my favorite font for this is going to be um, Impact, which is a very thick font. And I got that on for free at dfont.com. You may have to check though, I'm not sure if it's for personal or commercial use. Um, I'm not using it to sell, I'm just using it to show you or for my personal shirts. Um, but I have to verify that because I don't want to steer you wrong. So first I'm going to start by writing out the words that I want. And you can write them individually or all at once. It doesn't matter. Um, you, if you use multiple words, you need to figure out you know, what ones you want on the top, middle, bottom, um, and things like that. So I have this. I'm going to go ahead and pick out the impact font that I want. OK, there we go. Um, you can go ahead in here, change up the line spacing and stuff. But honestly, um, you don't have to do that there because you're going to be moving it around. But if there was some issues with, and you could actually bring the characters together closer, you would actually do that here. Um, you don't want very many spaces simply because you want it to, your image to be able to fill up as much as possible. Um, so try to get your letters as close as possible. And I think that looks pretty good. And I'll make it big, bigger here. So from here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I am going to ungroup. Now, I want to make sure I'm going to make this a compound path and this as well. But now I can move them independently. So now I'm going to figure out my sizing. So let's go ahead and do here and you um, and you don't necessarily have to follow this to the T as far as getting them um, even as long as you have a good space to work with where you want the image. I personally like it to be boxy. Um, I think it's kind of fun that way. And I like the look. So I'll kind of just move my letters around. Um, one le word may be a little bit larger than the other depending on how many letters it has. And once you find kind of where you want, um, I think this is really good right here, to make sure that they're even so that way you don't accidentally have it over like this or let's say you want it that way, that's fine. But if you want it to be even, go ahead and just drag and grab. Um, come over here to the transform and click right there on this one, this little horizontal, and it'll make sure it's even. And just in case you didn't see this, um, so let's say I, I have it exactly where I want it. Remember you want as least space as possible, um, but I want them to be even. There you go. Okay, oh, see I messed with it. Once you have it exactly the way you want it, um, and you can move it around 100 times, doesn't matter, just get to the best place that you want, okay? And then you're gonna go ahead and make a compound path. So now it's all one image. Get it the size that you want. You could change this later and make it nice and big. 
Um, and I'm going to go ahead and change the color so that way I can differentiate between these two. On the shirt that I'm going to make, um, I think I'm either going to use a lime green or a silver letters with a black cauldron. But let's go ahead and do a lime green. I thought that was kind of fun. So let's go ahead and do the lime green there. And then you have your cauldron. Now I want the cauldron to be in the front. So you can either bring to the front or grab these and bring to the back. But you want your image in the front. Now from here, the sizing is up to you. You can have it off that and it's gonna just cut it off there. Um, or you can have it smaller and perfectly in the middle. It's all up to you and how the image is orientated. So this one, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller than my letters. Right here is also something you wanna think about. Let's say I had a Jaguar and it had all these this eyes and teeth and everything. Now you see how there's big spaces right here? Um, there's not gonna be anything in there. So what you don't want and what you wanna figure out when you're placing this is let's say there was eyes and like these really important details. You don't want the important details to fall right in an open spot perfectly. You're gonna lose that detail. So you could then um, make it bigger, make it smaller. Maybe you wanna have it offset a little bit and like just put it down here, something like that. Um, that would be fun. Um, that way you're placing it where you're getting the most um, details as possible. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just put it right in the middle. And if I want to make sure it's right in the middle, again, I'll just grab, transform, center. Okay, so that's perfect. Okay, so this is where the fun part is. Super easy. I'm going to grab both images. And then I'm going to control C and control V. So basically I copied and then I pasted. And I'm going to move this off to the side. At this point, you do not want to separate these at all. You do not want to make one smaller. You don't want to, ooh, I want to move this over a little bit. If you do, you have to do this all over again. It, these have to match perfectly for this to work, OK? So now I'm over here, and I'm going to grab this one. And over here, I want to go to your Modify tool. And I'm going to click on Subtract and it subtracted the cauldron from my font. Over here, make sure you have it all, I'm gonna click on Crop. And then it cropped the cauldron from the fonts, okay? So what with this already highlighted, I'm gonna go ahead and Group. And over here, I'm gonna grab everything and click Group as well. You don't wanna accidentally move something at all because then everything won't line up. Okay, and over here, I'll go ahead and change the color so I know that I'm gonna have the black cauldron. And then if you, you can bring it over here, line it up and look at your artwork. Now lining it up isn't always perfect because the mouse moves, but if you were just to cut it straight like that, it would have cut perfectly. Um, and as long as you didn't change the sizes of anything. Now let's say you wanted to change the size of something now um, you could group it and then move it now, um, but you have to have it together. Um, you have to change it at the same time because if you were to change the size of the cauldron or of the letters, it will never match. So you do not want to mess with those individually. Keep them as one, okay? Um, so I'm going to ungroup. Okay, so here is where then you would go ahead and cut. Um, so I wanted to cut my green first. I could go ahead and go mo come over here. Um, and there's other ways of doing it where you can keep that in there and then just highlight it differently. We'll just keep it simple for here, okay? So then go ahead and place it on your mat where you want it. Um, remember, this is heat transfer vinyl. So what, what I'm using is gonna be heat transfer vinyl. So you're gonna want to mirror the images. Um, or when you go to cut, click um, mirrored image. Either way, both of them need to be switched, okay? So here's the green. Now, yes, it, you may feel that you have some wasted vinyl here, but it's very important. You cannot move every anything, um, otherwise it won't match. So from here, I can go ahead and cut um, when I'm ready, however I would like, and then I would send, send mirrored, okay? Um, when I'm done, I could move this over. Again, do not change the size of anything. Put this right here 
and then I could cut this in my black glitter again send mirrored once it's completely cut out and you have weeded it properly um, you'll have this image in black and you'll have this so I'm going to talk a little bit about how you would press this um, and this is just my very basic knowledge so pretend this design space here is my t-shirt um, I'm sorry okay this is my t-shirt so first I'm going to take this large image and I'm going to go ahead and place it down on my shirt first well before I place it on my shirt what you want to do is go ahead and press your shirt your shirt for about three to four seconds um, without anything on it what that's going to do is going to release any moisture that is inside your shirt um, and kind of and now this may not be scientific but in my head if it's going to shrink up a little bit even minute mounts um, it will do so with the shock of the first heat basically okay so once you've pre-pressed your shirt then go ahead and place down your first part and this is where you want to be very simple I'm going to go ahead and press this shirt with whatever heat settings you need according to the kind of vinyl you have but very small amounts so the minimum that it will take for it to peel off so if I could go ahead and press it for let's say five seconds four or five seconds and then I and I can lift up the paper or the transfer tape then I would do so um, and just keep on testing it to see how long it will take so the minute the the most sorry the less amount of time it takes to go ahead and press take off that tape transfer tape and then go ahead and place very carefully line everything up take your time um, and get it as nice as you can and go ahead and place this other image right on top um, the chances are your transfer tape is going to hit like right in your vinyl so this is going to be another reason why you're going to again press the very minimum amount to get it just to stick so then I'm going to go ahead and put my transfer or put this on um, put your parchment paper or your Teflon sheet press it the least amount possible peel it off and that's when I'm going to place my transfer or I mean my Teflon sheet over the whole image um, or your parchment paper whatever you use um, and press again and that's when you're going to do it for your longer amount um, you know 10 seconds whatever again whatever material you're using calls for that should keep you from having any shrinkage in the vinyl to where there, it wouldn't match up. Um, that way you're putting the most amount of heat at the same time together. Um, that way if it does shrink, it'll shrink together. Um, so you shouldn't really have any problems. Um, I did my very first one um, with, with HTV today and I didn't see any space in between. And even if you did see a little bit, it's not as noticeable but um, it could be noticeable if it happens to be a big part of the image or right where a certain letter falls. Um, so once that's done, you're good to go and you get to have lots of fun with your creativity. Um, you can do, like I said, the witch's brew, um, any kind of Halloween image you like. I know a lot of people do um, sports teams with their mascots um, and they also alternate different materials. You may use your glitter with your regular vinyl um, metallic is another one and get really creative you could also put um, like texture and I think I did one up here here's the deal with the texture is that you can see the image but sometimes it gets a little confusing <laughs> with your eyes you're like you're not sure what you're looking at and you lose the letter sometimes so I have an example here that I did um, excuse my husband's alarm where it is kind of, you can't see it but I did the mermaid kisses and starfish wishes um, I added some mermaid scales as my knockout and then I also did a starfish here I can't see it very well I don't like it so I wouldn't actually make this so I do apologize but um, there is fun ways you can do that like if you wanted to add some texture and let's say you didn't have any printed vinyl but I hope that helped you guys, and I hope you have fun with that. Make sure you show me some of your projects when you're done. 
um, and post them. And if you have any other tutorial requests, feel free to shoot us a message and we'd be happy to make them for you. Thanks, you guys have a wonderful night.